To make your movie scary, never show the monster until the end. <coughs> Hiding the monster in darkness or off frame is great at stopping your audience knowing where the monster is, therefore making it less predictable. But this technique has been used over and over again, and it's time to evolve. Bam! Spoilers ahead! I was so disappointed when I watched the final trailer for Jordan Peele's Nope. I felt he had ruined the reveal of its monster and therefore the surprise was lost. In fact, this made me go into the movie worried about whether it could actually live up to the hype. Jordan Peele's Nope does something with its monster that truly grabs your attention and never lets you feel safe, even though the movie shows the monster from early and often. This is where the Pokemon method comes in. Just like Pokemon, we follow the character as they meet and fight the monster. We learn about the monster at the same time as the characters. This is fundamentally crucial to pull off the Pokemon method. By doing this, you never let your audience get ahead of your characters, which for a horror film is really quite important. In Nope, this means we see the monster at the same time as the protagonist. There is a temptation to throw on a long lens to help guide the audience's attention, but Jordan chooses to stay wide, forcing us to actively search the sky and wait. The first key to this rule in the Pokemon method is that once you've shown your monster, you need to ensure that you haven't shown all of its tricks just yet. Let's see how Jordan Peele's Nope has split up the information that we learn about the monster across the entire movie. We start the film seeing the UFO-like shape race between the clouds. This is our first glimpse alongside the protagonist. The UFO seems to abduct horses by sucking them up into the sky. We now understand just how powerful and fast it must be to catch a horse. The UFO has been hiding inside a cloud that seems to be entirely static for at least six months. This suggests how smart it is and conscious of being noticed. From this point, we learn that the UFO is actually a sort of creature. All its actions take on a new meaning, so instead of abducting, it's actually been feeding. The creature attacks only when it's looked at. This gives the creature incredible intelligence and a set of rules for our protagonists. The creature is even more powerful than we thought as it sucks up over 40 people in one go. The creature now deposits all the items it couldn't digest on top of the house where the protagonists live. This shows it isn't just feeding, but it's either tormenting or marking its territory. The creature makes a hard turn to avoid a trap laid out by the protagonist and its skin ripples. This is the first time the creature seems more organic than rigid, which instantly makes me think of... If it bleeds, we can kill it. Finally, we are treated to the creature's physical evolution when it unfurls itself in a display of dominance in front of the protagonists. Jordan Peele has one monster but nine levels of information spread over the runtime of the film, each one carefully designed to evolve not just the monster, but the audience's understanding of it. But how do you deliver this info without using horror cliches? Never give your audience an easy fountain of information. Instead, find intriguing ways to reveal it. You will see in Nope that there is no handy scientist on site to explain the rules of the monster, to share its weaknesses and give the protagonists a clue as to how to overcome the imbalance of power. Instead, we learn about the monster as the characters learn about the monster. Nope does this in a brilliant way by tying the specialist knowledge of the protagonist to the way in which we learn about the alien, which makes it feel far more satisfying to watch. The lights come up in the theatre, and I can say without a doubt that Jordan Peele's approach to this horror thriller is a stroke of brilliance. He uses the Pokemon method to evolve the monster so we never know what's coming.